Hey there, John Morris here with johnmorrisonline.com and welcome to another episode of The John Morris Show. And in this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to send mail with PHP. So I'm going to be showing you the function in PHP that you'll need to use in order to do this. I'm going to show you how to set up some of the parameters and show you how to add things like a from email, a reply to, send HTML emails, and so forth. So that's what we're going to cover inside of this tutorial, so be sure to stay tuned. You know, I'm always harping on how important creating content to attract new clients is to you guys. It's how you get your name out there and let people get to know you. It's how you get and keep those people's attention. And it's how you use that attention to get those people to trust you enough to hire you as their developer. In fact, my blog content is the prime mover behind my entire business. Without it, I'd have no business. But I know a lot of you are just starting out or are new to the idea of blogging for your business and aren't sure how to get your blog started. Well, fear no more, because I recently created a blog tutorial where I walk you step by step through starting your blog. From picking your domain name, to setting up your hosting, to installing your blog software, and every little trick that I've learned along the way the last 11 years to make sure you're set up to be successful with it. Now it's a completely free, no email sign up or strings attached blog tutorial that you can find over at johnsbloggingtutorial.com. So go check it out and let's get you blogging and bringing in new clients for your web design business. Head on over to johnsbloggingtutorial.com. All right, so let's start out by taking a quick look over here on our right hand side and you'll see I've gone ahead and sent this test email over here so you can get a look at what you're actually going to get from this here. So there's a couple things of note here. First, you'll see that we have our subject line here. We have uh, who this was sent from and to. So you can see it was sent from what I call the sender name here and then sender at johnmorrisonline.com, which is something I made up. And then I sent it to test at johnmorrisonline.com. You'll notice here we have uh, some some larger text here and then some smaller text here. So this is actual HTML email. And then if we come down here or we come over here and we hit reply, you'll notice that even though I sent this from sender at johnmorrisonline.com, the reply is to reply to at johnmorrisonline.com. So this is all stuff that you can control inside of your code when you're sending emails with PHP. So let's go ahead and hop on over to the left and we'll take a look at that. So the way that we do this is we use the mail function in PHP. So if we uh, go to the web real quick, you can just go to Google and you can Google mail and then PHP. This is the top result as of this recording. I'd imagine that it'll stay that way. And so you can see all of the parameters here. We have the two parameters, so who we're sending it to. You can see some examples of how you might do this. You notice you can actually create a comma separated list of emails here so you can send to multiple recipients that way your subject line of course is going to be your subject line that'll be a string your message again you can do plain text or you can do uh, html although you do have to set some headers when you do html and we'll, we'll go through that then you have additional headers that you can send here those are the headers that i was just talking about we'll show you some of the common ones and then additional parameters here that you can send which is something that I rarely ever see used. All right, so you can kind of go through this. You can look at some of the examples they have here uh, if you need a little more in-depth or, or a little more information on it, but we'll walk through all of this stuff. All right, so first off is the recipient. So that's our uh, email address that we're gonna be sending the email to. Again, this could be something you hard code manually like I've done here. It could be generated through your PHP code. It could be pulled from a database. If you have some sort of user system, you know, there's lots of ways that you could come about this particular email address or, or like I mentioned earlier, a comma separated list of email addresses. So a number of ways that you can do that, but that's essentially what this two parameter is, is just the email address that you want to send it to. Next is the subject. So <laughs> again, pretty self-explanatory. This is the subject line that you want to use when the email goes out. The message, then this can be plain text or it can be HTML. You'll notice here I'm using HTML, so I'm using H1 tag. 
a paragraph tag here. Now, the one thing to keep in mind with it, when using HTML emails is every email provider is going to render a little bit differently. So it's a good idea to do a lot of testing in different email providers if you're using HTML. Now, if you stick to basic HTML, you'll probably be all right. But if you start getting into a lot of images and styling and so forth, then you may find that in certain email providers it doesn't show up exactly how you want. And so you just need to do a lot of heavy testing with that. And there are frameworks out there as well that have kind of done a lot of that for you that you can plug into and so forth. Obviously, that's beyond the scope of what we're doing here. But again, you can see here that I'm using HTML inside of my message, which is completely possible with this. All right, so next, uh, let's actually drop down here to this header. So if you're going to send HTML emails, then you need to include this header right here. And so this essentially just sets the content type of the email to text slash HTML so that they know that it's an HTML email and that it can be processed properly as HTML. Otherwise, they'll assume it's plain text uh, and then it will actually just display all of your HTML code. So if you sent, if you're doing this and you send the email and in your email, you actually see the HTML tags, there's probably something up with this and you want to come here and take a look at that. All right, so for HTML emails, you want to make sure and have this header. Now, some other common headers that you might see, you have your from address, which is if we pop over, you see here our from address, I set it as the sender name. So you can put whatever name you want here. Again, manually, it could be pulled from a database, etc. And then the email address inside of these little less than greater than brackets here. This is actually... I mean, this is optional. You could just put the email address uh, if you wanted to here. This is kind of the standard way most most of the time you see email addresses uh, like this. So that's why I formatted it that way. Probably want to format it that way as well unless you have some compelling reason not to. But that's the from email address. And then we have this reply to. And so you remember when I hit reply here, it went to the reply to email address. So that's where you actually set this is right here in your headers. You can set this reply to email address, all right? So we've contentated all of that into basically one long string uh, for the headers for the email that we're going to send. And then you can see we come down here and in our mail function, we just drop in our to, our subject, our message, and our headers. And then whenever this page was visited, when I visited this page, that it went ahead and processed it and sent that email to me here. All right, so again, pretty straightforward in terms of actually using the function. Now again, of course, depending on exactly how you're gonna be using this, you'd obviously wanna have some sort of security checks. Um, I generally try to avoid talking about what security checks you would put in in, in, in a tutorial like this simply because those things tend to change and what you need to do is keep up with the latest info security info that's going on at the time you happen to be watching this tutorial so this gives you the basic kind of idea of how to use it and then depending on the context in which you use it if you're using a contact form or you're pulling from a database there will be different security considerations and of course the time period in which you're using it the, that'll also affect the security uh, uh, considerations as well so just be sure to pay attention to that stuff and, you know, add in captures if necessary, honeypots, you know, uh, you can um, validate the email address and so forth. So just make sure to, to, to see what's out there in terms of, of doing that and then implement that in your script. Hey guys, you probably heard me talking about the importance of starting your blog to get new clients. And you may have even taken my tutorial at johnsbloggingtutorial.com. But I want to go further and not only help you get your blog started, but also help you get your first few visitors. You know, I found momentum to be such a huge factor in giving you the motivation to keep going with your blog and your web development career. And I want to give you a shot in the arm and get you off to a running start. Now, I'm blessed to have a large and engaged audience. In fact, my YouTube channel is thriving with nearly 100,000 video views per month and over 18,000 subscribers. Plus, my email list grows every single day and is now currently over 23,000 subscribers, all of which translates into 40,000 plus page views of my website each and every month, which is frankly something I never would have imagined 
just a few years ago. It truly is amazing, and as I mentioned, it's the secret to success behind my entire business. Well, what if I promoted your website to that audience of mine? I'm confident you would pick up a few new visitors and followers of your own, and I wonder how quickly you could grow your audience. Well, that's what I want to find out. Now, to get the details on this and how I can help, you want to head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash publicity. But you'll need to do it before you start your blog. So head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash publicity right away and let's get you off to a running start with your blog.